So then I grabbed the crystal. I rem remembered the crystal that was in my backpack from uh, Kauai. And I said, oh, I'm just going to meditate with this. Maybe this will give me what I need. <clears throat> I tried everything. Um, and when I started to meditate with this crystal, placed it on my forehead and started to meditate. And as I did, I saw this vision of this like huge marine-like creature. And she was the scariest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Like her head was like this huge head with all these spikes and like her teeth were like these sharp teeth. And she, she had these little beady eyes and she didn't say anything to me, but she told me telepathically, like, and with her eyes was just like, there was just so much hate from this creature to me. And I had encountered different creatures and things like that through my astral projection and things like that, right? This person, this, whatever this was, um, which now I know, but like at that time I was like confused. I was like, why? Why do you hate me? Why? And at one point, you know, I knew that she also wanted to eat me, which was also super like just, I didn't understand. <laughs> like, why would you want to eat me? I don't understand. I don't understand. What do you want? Why? And, um, So I grew up in a home where, um, uh, you know, my mom, she was very much a, um, she wanted me to experience all different types of religions. And so we celebrated Hanukkah one year along with Christmas. And I believe that we celebrated like Kwanzaa and we celebrated just um, different religions and things like that. And, um, you know, even some practice of Buddhism, um, anyway. And so growing up, that's kind of what I was told, was like, hey, these are all of the religions. She grew up Catholic. She really did not want um, me to feel guilty, <laughs> you know. Um, and some people who come from that understand. Um, and so, yeah, basically she just said, here, here, I'm going to try and give you all these experiences and then you're going to choose, you know, and whatever you choose is going to be right because it's all um, like a relative truth type of thing. And so for much of my life, that's what I thought, you know, and I was like, okay, your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth. And, um, and I never really thought past that, like I never really thought um, what that would do to a person or to a society or like if, you know, um, if there was no actual parameter of truth, like how that would actually impact my life or the people around me. And so, um, so that was fun. Um, but basically, yeah, I then, um, in high school and things like that, I mean, I wasn't a bad kid. I never like, you know, my mom would probably say different, but I, um, I did, um, I kind of want to like skip over that. I'm just going to go to um, my young adult life. So basically, um, when I was 19, I found out I was pregnant with my son, Dean, and um, that in itself was, um, I, I had never, I was 19, so if you could imagine, but I remember praying, but I don't remember even like for a moment thinking like I didn't question who am I praying to what am I doing I just remembered sitting alone at one point because people were telling me to have an abortion um, and things like that and um, you know I I went away from people at one point and I did I ended up praying and I said I don't know what to do you know um, and I had this overwhelming sense and kind of like a very clear like vision message thing where um, I was told like, you know, yeah, no, um, it's, it's not right to take the life of this child. And so, um, so I said, okay, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I guess I'll, I am, I don't know, I'll try. And um, so once I made that decision, um, which wasn't really my 
decision to make. Um, but, you know, I um, was then a single young mom and I was going through prenatal yoga, trying to just, um, all before this I was a dancer and things like that, so I had always had dance kind of in my life. And then um, I was going through prenatal yoga. I knew that I didn't know how to be a mom or, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I put myself in school for um, early child development and child psychology. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna try and just give this kid um, the best shot that he has. And, um, and, uh, so I went to school, I studied really hard, um, I did really well, I um, worked pretty much up until I had him and I was doing prenatal yoga, I felt pretty good. I felt like I was um, doing what it was that I was supposed to do, I guess, um, and kind of like pulling myself up by my bootstraps and um, just getting it done. And um, that, also translated from prenatal yoga into um, meeting one of my first like mentors who started to teach me about um, oneness meditation and oneness healing and things like that. And basically what that means is um, uh, I didn't realize until I met her that the different chants and things like that that I would either say or hear in yoga classes actually meant something. And so um, you know, she started teaching me and a group of people different chants, different uh, mantras, and we would be doing different, like, healings and things like that where, um, yeah, like, so basically I started to really get into that. And then I actually went through, like, a program so that I could um, have, like, a certificate and heal people and things like that. So I did oneness healing at first. And... Um, and a lot of that was a kundalini work. And so the, another reason why I'm sharing this video is that anybody who's like come from this background, um, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But um, basically we did a lot of kundalini work and things like that. And that's basically, um, yeah, like a serpentine spirit that goes through your spine energy and, and that will also you work with your chakras and things like that. And so I was pretty um, well learned about all of those things. So I was working with chakras, kundalini, um, breath work. Um, I was meditating a lot, chanting. Um, and But I, that still wasn't even as heavy as, as it got later. So basically, that was kind of my intro into everything. And uh, what was interesting about that is um, my mentor was just like, yeah, so just talk about your divine. Um, you know, it could be anyone. And I, I do remember that there was man, one man there who said, well, I want my divine to be Jesus. And uh, she said, that's great. It's fine. Do it. You know, and so um, it's a lot of there's a lot of deception. But basically, like I. Um, at that point. I had thrown out whatever belief that I had um, growing up because um, I did go to a Christian um, elementary school and like one year of a Christian high school. Um, but it was all out the window at this point, all the other things that I had experienced up to this point and now um, going through yoga and then also having this mentor who was telling me that I could, um, I could just kind of make up like what I thought. And so um, that it was all the same. It was all the same, just different names. And uh, so I did that. And um, um, yeah, then moving forward from that point, um, I then later got my yoga teaching certification. And so through that whole entire course, I am pretty know all of my postures at that point, but I'm just getting more in depth with it. And um, I'm doing this every day. Um, I would never say that it was a religion, but that's exactly how I treated it. Um, now looking back, I would wake up at like 4.30 or 5.30 in the morning and do at least an hour of um, yoga 
And then I would do at least an hour to two hours of meditation. And in that meditation and breath work and working with my chakras and things like that, I would also use crystals um, because I learned about that. Um, they're actually gateways. And so um, I'll talk more about that in like a minute. But basically, um, the crystals can be used um, to open like occultic, um, I guess, like influence. Yeah. And so, so anyway, uh, I didn't understand any of that because everything was the same and there was no talk of any evil forces or anything like that. The, the most evil thing that you would ever pr maybe encounter was, you know, something that you would call a shadow spirit. And so, um, and people were very apt to tell me, yeah, so you might encounter this like shadow spirit or something like that. But if you do just sur surround yourself in white light and, um, and they can't harm you. Because at this point, I'm also astral projecting. I'm, I'm also now I'm meditating to the point where I'm able to um, astral project, which means that um, I can leave my body <laughs> and um, go over different areas where other people might be and things like that. And, um, and actually, I learned later that um, a lot of uh, occultic people do that so that they're able to also um, claim territory and things like that in the supernatural realm and the spiritual realm. I didn't know that either. I was just practicing this kind of new age practice that turned very real for me. This is what I was doing every day, you know. Um, I do it every morning and probably like at night too, most of the time. At this point, I had already also just changed my um, my entire diet to being vegan so that I could be a clear channel um, because then I was readying myself to become a Reiki healer. And this is over years of time, so I just like want to say that too. Um, and I then um, walk into a place where I am starting to be healed um, with Reiki and um, And uh, the guy there, he was a new Reiki master. And so basically, I had asked him, well, I really want to become a Reiki healer. Like, what do I have to do? And they had different courses and things like that. And he's like, yeah, come back in, um, and I'll get you attuned to Reiki. And I was like, OK, great. And um, in in that school of thought, I guess, any type of energy that you're working with, like you can, you can attune to a higher frequency of that energy so that you're able to do more things. And at that point, I thought I was helping people. Like I really did think that when I was um, placing my hand over um, my friend's head as they were meditating and things like that, and they would see just like vibrant, like colors and things like that, like more than what you could even imagine. You know, um, I thought I was helping. I thought I was healing. Not at all did I think that I was like contributing to to anything evil. I, I didn't even, the last thing that we talk about in the new age is evil. The last thing that we talk about is um, sin. There is no sin in the new age. That's a dirty word. You don't talk about that. And so, um, yeah, just pressing on, uh, I get attuned to Reiki and how that also happened, which I'll just talk about because it's, um, yeah. So he's a newer Reiki master and, um, and uh, I remember that I was at one point in this Attuning, I was laying down and um, meditating. At this point, I could meditate for hours. Like, um, I could either sit in meditation or I could lay in meditation for hours. Anyway, um, and uh, he led me through a meditation at first, and that first meditation really, um, you know, 
got me. I saw a lot of things. I saw a lot of things that um, uh, I'll just I'll just share. But basically, he um, also said, "Okay, I'm just going to introduce the spirit into this room." And I was like, "Okay." I mean, the spirit of Reiki, in my understanding at that point, was, um, and the spirit of Kundalini, the spirit of these things, my understanding of these things at that point, was very much just that, um, well, this is all under the name of healing, and this is all under the name of love. And so, why would that spirit even, I would never even think to think of it as a negative thing. Um, and so, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm ushering in the spirit right now, and um, you know, you just need to meditate and yield to this spirit to overcome you. And, and basically, now that I think about it, <laughs> that's the very um, real way to have a demon that I did later have to be um, delivered from. But anyway, um, so just after this point, things quicken, so that's why I'm, I'm building up to this as well. Um, so he ushered in the spirit, spirit enters me. I, I, I start to see visions. Um, first, it's um, just all different kinds of landscapes and things like that, just so real, like, like so vivid, like I am literally flying over these things. And I wasn't on any drugs, nothing. I was being attuned to Reiki at this point. I um, had this amazing like just vision and it's just so it was just, it was really beautiful. Um, and at one point then, um, I, I settle in to a cave that's in my mind that in this vision was like a crystal and, and then it sp panned out and there was um, a bunch of different like, the first eye that I went through was like an eagle eye and then it was all these different eyes of these different um, creatures. And so, um, I mean, I woke up, I mean, like, I didn't wake up. I got up from my meditation. I just, and he said, well, what happened? You know, I, I could feel that there was something really powerful that happened. And I explained to him everything. He had me write it all down and things like that. After I explained it, he said, you need to write this down. So I did. And um, uh, it was very convincing to me that something had happened. And um, yeah, and then he had me laid down one more time to just kind of like seal that. And so I went through a meditation um, to have that happen as well. Um, yeah, after that point, um, nothing was like weird or wrong. Everything was like pretty normal. <laughs> um, I was just now able to do Reiki. Um, so then I'm teaching yoga. Um, I am doing Reiki, and I'm able to open my own like space with another healer to perform Reiki healings on people, kind of like just in and out by appointments and things like that. <sighs> anyway, um, and then I also then meet another mentor of mine that comes into my life and uh, she hires me as her personal assistant. And she is a, kind of like a yoga maven who I had looked up to. And the way that you kind of like um, also, you learn from these people who would be your mentors and things like that. Um, that's how you um, learn more in this spiritual um, idea with like new age and things like that. So anyway, so I, um, I start following her, I start just like doing what she's saying, that's what I mean, it's like she would um, have me go with her at different places um, and she was super popular, she is super popular, she has like millions of followers on Instagram and things like that. At that point I, I um, just wanted to learn from her and um, and I had a very different idea of success at that point, but anyway. Um, and so I felt like she was helping people and I wanted to help people too. She had like written a book to help people. And um, anyway, in the world standards, it, it all seemed pretty good. And um, I, 
she took me to Kauai, North Shore Kauai. Um, and uh, there, a lot of things happened. Um, so, some things I can't say just because I, I did like sign like a disclosure form and things like that. And uh, so there were pretty high up people, especially in the, the world of like what I was doing and the yoga world in um, working. I never worked with ayahuasca, um, but a lot of the leaders in this um, movement were working with ayahuasca and things. Can you explain what ayahuasca is because most people don't know what that is. Okay, yeah, so that's a plant, that's a plant. And the people say this is a plant medicine um, just much like you would say like shrooms, um, like mushrooms and things like that would be like a, a plant medicine that would like heighten your consciousness and things like that um, so that you are able to see more of um, what you're supposed to be led through in this lifetime. Anyway, um, so, so she takes me to North Shore Kauai. Um, I go to a couple of these people's homes that are there. They have like fully running um, sustainable eco homes uh, and farms on the North Shore of Kauai. Just like, yeah. And um, there's healers there and things like that. All of these people are talking about like the Lumerians that are at um, North Shore Kauai. And basically um, that is just if you look at Helena Blavatsky, she talks about um, who was the founder of the Theosophical Society. Um, I didn't know this at first. Um, she was also a Satanist. Um, like no one says this is the origin of these things, but she had her um, theory of these different people. And that's like kind of one of the categories that she would talk about is the Lumerians. And um, anyway, uh, later on, I find out that that's actually not true. Um, those, those beings are very real, but they're not Lumerians and they're not aliens and they're not, like, it's not those things. Um, they're actually demons. <laughs> and so I, I had no idea. Um, and so I don't, I don't want to go through this um, video and just, you know, um, I just want to be really mindful about, like, speaking that truth because that's what um, happened at the end of me being saved but basically um, yeah so she ended up taking me to a cave in uh, Kauai as well and she said yeah there's a mermaid that like lives in here and has eaten a lot of men and things like that and there's just this huge legend and things like that. So we actually swam in those waters. She's like, we're gonna be fine. You can swim in these waters and just like no men can or whatever. And so then, I mean, I remember going in there and feeling like a really heavy presence and, um, and I swam and then I came back out. I had one of my crystals, which was a citrine crystal that I would meditate with on my third eye because at that point I had opened that. And so, um, I was meditating with that crystal in the water and I was just asking, um, I was asking for knowledge. Yeah. So I asked whatever was there for knowledge and I did that for a while. I put that in my backpack. I didn't really think about it after, um, but this is going to tie in. So, um, so I go back to the States, um, or I guess Hawaii is the United States, but basically I come back here and, and um, basically um, I, I, again, um, just continue to try and build on what I'm doing, uh, and very, like, I was teaching yoga again, Reiki healing, able to open up my own spot, was a personal assistant to this really well-known yoga guru, so there was, like, no reason for me to stop any of that stuff, really, so, um, yeah, and, uh, and I was also rock climbing and things like that. And this is when someone came into my life where I was at a rock climbing gym. And, um, and this one guy um, came up to me at first, you know, um, just asked for my number. I thought, okay, this is just somebody who's trying to like pick me up or something, go on a date. And um, so I give him my number. He's like, do you climb here often? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, 
after that point, we do meet up, and uh, we meet up for a couple of times. And each time that we meet up, he starts to talk to me about Jesus. He starts to talk to me about the gospel and things like that. And um, I remember like looking at his Bible and just being like, so, okay, I've had all of these experiences. Where is that in here? And, um, and I was actually pretty, looking back now, I was pretty crude <laughs> and um, not as tolerant as I thought that I was. Growing up, again, I, w I was taught, like, you need to be tolerant of all things and stuff like that. But I had a certain, um, just, I just felt like Christians were narrow-minded. I felt like, um, like, how could you, how could you tell me about what's happening in my life? How can this tell me what's happening in my life right now? How does this apply? I felt like they were very, like, misled. Um, and that they were just doing something that other people were telling them to do. Anyway, and so I felt like I had the knowledge that this guy needed. <laughs> and um, I shared with him a lot of things. And um, probably after like the fourth or fifth time that we had met up, and he had already taken me to one of his churches at this point, because I did want to be tolerant of everything, right? So I went to church with him one time. and. Um, he, uh, he and I ended like talking kind of bad because I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see, like I couldn't just understand why he was being so, um, I just felt like narrow-minded narrow about certain things. I was like, well, how could you tell me that this is an absolute truth when obviously it's not in my perspective? in my experience and things like that. Um, so we, we ended talking. <laughs> and I didn't know at this point he started to pray for me, because Christians do that. Um, and so I, um, I then meet this one woman who is like a seventh generation gypsy. Just if you could see like the hand, whose hand was in my life at this point. But it, it's interesting because then you'll see the end. Anyway, but basically, like, then I meet the seventh generation gypsy who's from, like, Croatia. And uh, she's really just, like, my age, tall, beautiful, just, like, tons of fun. Uh, we get along together great right away. Um, she's hanging around at my place for a couple months. We're just building a friendship, a really good friendship at this point. And uh, she's always reading tarot, always reading tarot. People come up to her, hey, can you read my tarot? Of course, I'll read your tarot. She's always reading tarot. Three months go by, I never ask her to read my tarot. I guess you're supposed to ask. <laughs> um, I guess that's how that works. Um, there's, there is a legality that happens in um, these things. And so basically, so three months go by, I finally say, you know what, like, can you read mine? She's like, yeah. So she reads mine. Um, scary how accurate and, like, at that time, I thought that was really amusing. And then um, she was like, yeah, you know what, I think that you, like, could totally do this. And um, she starts showing me the entire deck of tarot. And I'm thinking to myself, awesome. I'm healing people <laughs> with Reiki. I'm, um, man, yeah, I'm meditating. I am getting like, you know, like, um, I'm doing yoga. I'm, I'm doing this with all these people. They're healing their backs. They're healing their, you know, they're eating better. They're like doing all these things. All of this on the surface seems so good. And I was like, and this now, you know? Like I felt like it was a gift to me that like, that these things were happening, you know? Um, and so, uh, so she starts going through the entire tarot deck. At this point, like, um, she tells me all the stories, all the background and things like that. She starts reading. I start reading. I guess I have an affinity for it and I'm pretty good. I meet different spirit guides along the way through my meditation and different practices and things like that up to this point. And now I'm able to also hear audibly um, what's going on with the person across from me. 
So um, there's familiar spirits that are around people. And um, my people that I was working with, because I had opened up a contract with them where I said, yes, like you have a certain amount of access to me and I'm letting you in in this way. Um, they, you know, I would sometimes hear the other person's or I'd hear mine and there was usually a conversation going on. And so I would read the cards and I could definitely read the cards, but I was mostly hearing audible information about what was happening with them. So when I would say, is this what's happening with you? They would say, yeah, how do you know that? And um, I'm like, well, spirit is telling me. And I wasn't lying because spirit was telling me and that's all I knew. Um, I don't know who spirit, I didn't know what, you know, I thought it was all good. I thought I was trying to help this person. And so um, it used, to, like many people, even after my conversion and things like that, would message me and say, yeah, but your reading to me was so uplifting to me, was so encouraging to me. How could that be wrong? Mm -hmm. and, um, and if anything, I feel like many of the things that I was told to confirm or say only kept them in more bondage looking back than ever. Um, yeah, stay in that relationship with that person. Wait out for that person. You know, um, just so many different things. That was just a relationship example, but basically like so many things to just keep people in bondage when I look back on it. Um, and yeah, so um, basically, yeah, that, that's um, up until that point. I have no idea. So, so now I add that to my list of things that I'm doing for people at events and things like that. I was working with people who still now um, run some really big um, New Age festivals right now. This last year was the first year that I went back and I actually prayed for people. But this is a year and a half after um, being saved. And so, um, uh, but I used to help with those things. I used to be a key person to like do things there, hold a booth and teach and dance and share and um, and now um, yeah like so I was able to share those things as well all the things that I had mentioned that I worked up to this point um, and then um, as more prayers and things like that were happening. I do remember that one of the last encounters that I did have with the person who was trying to share the gospel with me, I remember leaving and going up to my apartment door and saying to myself, like, but what about Jesus? You know, like, what about him? Like, why can't I, why can't I pin this down? You know, like, why, why doesn't he make sense in all of this? Why would somebody be coming up to me and saying he is the truth the life and the way. Why? Why is there an absolute to this when everywhere else that I and everyone else that I talk to, it's not that way. It's pick and choose. It's do do as you will will be the whole of the law. And that's actually the satanic credo um, that I learned after being saved. Um, so um, yeah, I I remember there then was um, uh, like I, I, I feel like at that point I was even given like kind of like a vision at that point because I was very um, visual and I could audibly hear like things and stuff like that. And so at that point I had a tiny like in my mind I was thinking, but what about Jesus? What about him? Why, why is he so different? Why can't I pin this down, you know? Just, just for a split second this was like a thought in my mind, but it was so like just close to my heart and I remember like seeing like a tiny piece of my heart opening up to him like in this vision during this like question before going into my apartment and um, after that happened and after the prayers and things like that which I didn't know people were praying for me people started to pray that I would detest the works of the of, of the evil one of the enemy of Satan and I was like, didn't even know that they did that. Um, but I remember one day waking up and um, after like 
a few like weeks of just doing tarot over and over again for people and just feeling like just completely exhausted, I did everything else the same. So it wasn't like anything had changed for me, like in my practice. I was still waking up, I was still meditating, doing yoga, I was still eating like really well, doing, uh, yeah, like um, doing all of the things that I needed to do to ready my heart and my mind and things like that to do this work. And, um, and I remember every, after every time I just felt so exhausted and, um, and I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I just remember just being like, you know what, I don't, I don't even want to do this. Like, um, and um, that's when like my spirit guides started to get angry with me, which I didn't even know was a thing. For me, I was like, yeah, like, okay, you can be upset that I'm not reading tarot. I'm the boss, not you. So, you know, sorry. Uh, I'm not doing this. And um, it started with that. I'm a very stubborn person. So when I saw that they started to retaliate to me by, um, because I guess I opened them up spiritually to have access to like my, um, my energy and things like that. So I would wake up in the morning and not even be able to like get out of bed. And I was pregnant. I've had exhaustion, like being pregnant, like a really real exhaustion. This was just like, another level, like a supernatural exhaustion that I can't even explain. So um, I knew it was a fight. I knew it was a fight. And um, I didn't know what I was fighting or why. I remember asking them, like, why? Why? You know, like, I just don't want to. I remember giving in and reading. I remember giving in and, like, doing whatever it is that they said because, because I just didn't want to be tormented. I didn't know that that's what I was, that was happening to me, you know? I, I just didn't understand. I didn't know what was going on. All I know is that I didn't want to do certain things that they wanted me to do. But I had given them access over my body enough where they could um, physically mess with me. And at this point, I'm really confused. There's a couple months that happen that go by where um, I, don't, I don't understand what's happening. I'm doing everything right I'm going to all of my different spiritual teachers and things like that, and I'm asking them. I'm going to different ones that they're telling me to go to. And they're like, here, go ask this person. Here, go. You're going to get healed by this person. Don't worry, you know? Like, and um, I remember just like running around like a chicken with its head cut off and just seeking for answers. Help me, help me. I'm being like tormented right now. Help me. What's going on? I didn't even know this was a thing. How come no one told me? And... Um, and um, yeah, I, I was at the end of my rope. I spent money on trying to get this fixed, get this handled, get this taken care of. All of my friends, I had exhausted all of my resources. And I was so physically, <laughs> emotionally, just at the end of my rope. Um, to the point where they would infiltrate my mind to have suicidal thoughts where I knew it was outside of me because there was nothing, I, I, I knew them. I knew it was an outside thought of myself, the suicidal thought that they would try and implant in my head and like in my consciousness and things like that because I didn't do what they wanted. And so um, I would say, no, why? Why would I ever want to do that? It was kind of like them even saying like, well, why don't you just do this? Because you'll just um, come back in another form. Maybe you didn't do all the things that you were supposed to do this time around, but you'll come back. So just end it if it's too much. And um, I remember just being like, no, why would I do that? Why would I do that? So I knew it was an outside thought, an outside suicidal thought. Okay, just laying that down. But basically, then, um, after I had exhausted all of my resources and I had no one else to go to, I, I literally spent so much money and I tried to go to even people who didn't charge me money and things like that. I tried it all. And so then I grabbed the crystal. I rem remember the crystal that was in my backpack from uh, Kauai. And I said, oh, I'm just going to meditate with this. Maybe this will give me what I need. <clears throat> 
I tried everything. Um, and when I started to meditate with this crystal, I placed it on my forehead and started to meditate. And as I did, I saw this vision of this like huge marine-like creature. And she was the scariest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Like her head was like this huge head with all these spikes and like her teeth were like these sharp teeth. And she, she had these little beady eyes and she didn't say anything to me, but she told me telepathically, like, and with her eyes was just like, there was just so much hate from this creature to me. And I had encountered different creatures and things like that through my astral projection and things like that, right? This person, this, whatever this was, um, which now I know, but like at that time I was like confused. I was like, why? Why do you hate me? Why? And at one point, you know, I knew that she also wanted to eat me, which was also super like, just, I didn't understand. <laughs> Like, why would you want to eat me? I don't understand. I don't understand. What do you want? Why? And um, so another thing that happens with, with these spirits is they'll, they'll if, if they have access over you, they'll kind of gang up. So I had already had two that was ganging up on me up to this point, making me super exhausted and having suicidal thoughts, okay? Then once this lady came in and I had had her at least enter in, um, in a way that um, any time I would close my eyes, I would see her after this point. I just knew that she wanted to kill me. And, um, and there was just so much, like, like I just didn't understand what was going on. They, then they kind of converged, I guess. And um, after that meditation, they started to take away my appetite. And so um, I would never willingly, like, <laughs> unless I was willing, like willingly fasting, but I was not willing at this point um, to not eat. And they would torment me and um, if I would try and things like that to eat. And I had dropped like 20 or 30 pounds within like a month and a half um, because I was overly exhausted. They would take my energy whenever they wanted and um, they would give me suicidal thoughts whenever they wanted and they would take away um, me eating whenever they wanted. So I, um, I was already pretty skinny at that point, you know? Um, at that point, I was very, very skinny. And um, I was at, I was, that was it. I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't understand, like, what was happening to me. All I was trying to do was help people. And I didn't understand why these spirits wanted to kill me. <laughs> At the end of the day, I didn't understand. And um, and um, so uh, I remember <laughs> the only thing that I knew to do was to do more of the things that I was doing. And, and because then I learned more practices from the New Age because they were like, this is what you really need to do so that those things don't bother you. So I was doing everything, man. I remember after losing that 20 to uh, 30 pounds, watching a video um, from this one really famous um, tarot reader. She's actually on YouTube. <laughs> That's kind of scary. But anyway, um, so she's on YouTube. I looked her up. Uh, she had like a monthly thing. And um, I remember watching her specific thing. and, and um, She's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be in town this Saturday, like, you know, and things like that. And uh, what was interesting, too, is that she would bring in the Bible. Like, she, I remember her, like, reading and talking about Nineveh. I remember her reading and, like, just, like, talking about different, like, things in the Bible and things like that. But she'd also talk about the Quran. She'd also talk about, like, other stuff. She was very, very well read, very, very well versed. She was also able to speak very eloquently. So to me, this person just, like, had all this knowledge. And she was like, you know, so tolerant of all these things. And she was speaking so much truth through her cards and things like that. She's like, yeah, I'll be in town. Come and see me if you can. And she's at San Diego. I said, you know what? Called up my best friend at the time. And um, I said, yeah, I don't know what else to do, but I think I need to go see her. And she was like, okay, I'll go with you. So 
that Saturday we make that trip down there. And, um, yeah, uh, she just, she has such a presence about her, first of all, in the room. And so she starts calling out people, answering things, you know, telling them about themselves and things like that. And people are just blown away, you know. And, um, I mean, I was blown away. It was, it was pretty intense. And uh, then she starts to tell a story. And she said, yeah, well, you know, part of, like, what is happening here is that um, uh, right before I like had developed all of these gifts that I'm sharing with you tonight there was this huge 20 foot tall somewhat shadow creature that came to visit me and he said you know I'm, I'm, I'm here to, to kill you I'm gonna eat you and um, <clears throat> And she said that she, she kind of looked at him. And she said, you know something? You're kind of cute. And the whole entire room is laughing. And she's laughing. And I'm thinking about <laughs> my thing that keeps like tormenting me. Huge 20 foot but marine figure that wants to eat me. And I'm thinking, I need to talk to her about this. And so she goes on, the end of it happens, um, and people are going up to her to say goodbye and things like that. And I, I go up to her and I say, hey, this is what's happening to me. What's going on? How do, I, how do I stop this? What's going on? I need help. She said, oh, she's like, this is really good. This is really good. And I said, what? And she's like, yeah, this is great because um, that's your shadow side. And all you have to do is make friends with your shadow side. And then after you make friends with your shadow side, you'll be able to do all these things. And um, I just remember just looking at her and I just remember just thinking, really, like this is it. This is it. I can't live this way. I'm going to die. There's no answers. Nothing. To be tormented by a world unseen is crazy. No one, no one had an answer for me. And um, I remember going, getting in the car with my friend at that point, and we just erupted in like an argument. Now I know a little bit more about spiritual warfare to talk about that, but at that time I didn't. And I didn't know how susceptible I was to it. My, st my friend still doesn't know. And so I, um, she said, yeah, well, we just need to meditate. Once we meditate, we're fine. So we meditate, things like that. <laughs> and uh, we just drive back to her place. She goes into, I, I love my friend. She was really trying to be there for me, okay? But, um, yeah, so, so we get back to her house in Venice. She goes into the room with her partner, and I go on the couch. And I remember it was like 4 in the morning or something, and um, I remember closing my eyes and just, and just thinking, like, there's no hope. I, there's no hope. And, um, yeah, close my eyes, and I, I heard in my dream, you need to go to church. <laughs> and I remember in my dream saying, what? <laughs> and uh, waking up at 7.30 in the morning. Close my eyes at 4. That happens. Wake up at, at 7.30 in the morning. And I, I feel like somebody put my finger in a light socket. And I never felt this way before, where I felt a conviction. Because I didn't know what conviction felt like. And it was so strong at that point. I didn't know what that felt like. And um, I just got up and I said, yeah. And, <laughs> and I literally didn't even say bye to my friends. I just, I went straight in my car. I drove straight down um, to the last church that I remember even going to was with that one guy who shared the gospel with me. 
and we ended things horribly. And, um, and I just remember going and driving. That's like an hour's distance. So anyway, um, I just remember driving, getting to that church, thinking like, that's not a lot of people here, whatever. Maybe it's a slow Sunday. I don't care. I'm here. And so I get to the doors. I grab onto the um, handles, and I pull it open, and it's locked. And I'm like, what? You know? And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. And then I'm thinking, like, like, you know, these people want me to be here. Like, what's going on? Like, is this a game, you know? And so I just couldn't even, I was like, these people want me to be here. I don't understand. And I remember even having a conviction of like, this is how it could be. Um, and I kind of freaked out <laughs> and I got in my car. I called that person because there's no one else that I knew. And I didn't, I mean, I probably could have Googled it, but I was just so like, I gotta go. I, this is all I know is that I have to do today. It was like, just like, that was my mission. That was it. I had no hope, but I had this crazy dream and I felt like I was like, like somebody stuck my finger in a light socket and I had to go. So, so I went um, and I called him and he said, yeah, oh, they actually moved. Um, they moved this weekend. So, <laughs> And, um, but they're actually here. And he gave me turn by turn, um, like directions to go to that, to the new spot that they're in. By the time I got there, I just like, was just so like, I had to, I had just, I felt like I, I couldn't stop talking. I just told him like everything. I told him everything that was happening up to that point. From when I saw him, from when I met him up until this point, he had no idea. And I just, I'm just crying. I'm just crying and I'm just telling him, um, but, yeah, uh, he's like, you know what, I think like you, um, I didn't end up going to that service. He was like, you should just go home, take a shower, I'll meet you at the 11, we'll go to the, this other church. I said, okay, whatever. Because at this point I was just done talking and, um, and I, I did that. We, we go to this church, and it's a Baptist church. And I had no, I don't know anything about any of this stuff. I don't understand, I don't get it. And so, um, but I'm talking to him more even when we're in the car on the way there and just like there's just too much to say about the last couple months and um, there's so many things that are connecting and uh, once we get up into like like but I still didn't have like I was just like why like what and so um, so I get into the to the church and as I walk into the church um, and I've never had this experience since <laughs> or ever. Um, so I walk into the church and there is a string like just musicians and, and just um, two people singing and, um, and they're singing praises to the Lord. And, um, and I'm like, I walk in and I just get flooded. And it's like the atmosphere is so thick and um, like I walk into a space that's just so thick um, and the music goes like I felt like in my ear and down in my heart and all I could say was yes this is how music is supposed to sound for you God and I remember even being like what what did I just say <laughs> and um, so these things were happening and I was even catching myself being like what is this revelation I'm having? I didn't understand what conviction was, what revelation was. Um, and then I go to sit down. Um, oh, yeah, as that happens, I just start crying. And it's not even like a crying. It's like the floodgates in my eyes just open up. And it felt like the tears, since I was a child, just like came out. Like all the tears that you could ever imagine, like just somewhere deep in my body opened up and just like, just came out. And I, and it, I didn't even have to try and it was just pouring out of my face, just pouring out of my face. And um, at this point, yeah, it's just, it felt, felt like a cleansing kind of, and I, I sit down and this old man goes to the pulpit 
I don't even know what this guy's got to say. I'm already just like, oh man, you know, why am I here? And, uh, and he starts speaking. And the moment he starts speaking, I know that message is for me. And I'm like, God, you're speaking to me right now. And again, just the floodgates of my eyes just open and I'm just, just gushing, gushing with tears. And I'm not, I can't, it's not even a cry. It's, it's, it's gushing of tears coming out of my face. <laughs> and, um, and I, everything this person is saying, the word of God to me, and I was like, this is it, this is it. I was just like, this guy's talking to me. God's like talking to me? Like, you know, I didn't understand what was going on. And um, all I know is that my friend kept getting me like a piece of tissue to wipe my tears and things like that and like sitting down and then going and get more and, you know, I was like, just bring the box, you know, like, <laughs> and so, so we brought the box. I'm the only one hysterically kind of, or like, you know, just gushing um, in a Baptist church. Now I know it's kind of a little bit more of like a, you know, nobody's like, oh, you know, like, so I'm just like, oh, really? Like, you know, truth. And um, just truth was spoken to me at that time. Truth that like no one had, no one could tell me what was going on with me, but that man could, why? Not because of him, because of the word. And that's exactly what I needed. I didn't even know how thirsty my soul was. Spiritually, I was dead. And I was so spiritual. So how could that be? And um, um, I just remember, <laughs> after everything, just looking at my friend and just saying, I think I need a Bible. <laughs> and he was like, yes. And I was just like, no. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just like, never in a million years. And I remember I had tried to read that Bible before. I tried to read that Bible with that person before because I wanted to, like, I was, I tried. I swear I've tried. I tried before this point. And it wasn't until that day when I got my Bible after that entire experience that I opened it up and I wish I bookmarked where it was because I don't even know. But I remember reading it and understanding it. And for him to tell me, I gave you eyes for my word now. And I was like, I'm done. I just, again, just gushed, gushed, just cried, cried, cried. Once I read, like, I was just, I, I could understand it. And he said, I gave you eyes for my word. And I was just like, I don't even, I'm done. You know, like, I'm done. And um, that was, of course, when I knew I was saved. But, like, <laughs> um, since then has just been, like, a living testimony. He has um, delivered me from satanic and demonic forces. The truth of the unseen realm and who he is and what purpose he has for my life has been unveiled. And um, he has his Holy Spirit indwelling in me to teach me these things and to always point to Jesus, always. And um, I have been able to see friends of mine from the New Age be saved with the same story, like God has used my testimony in so many ways where um, someone will look at me and say, me too. And, um, and, and they're ready. And so I don't know if anybody's going to see this, but yeah, if you're ready to do that, um, you know, I just want to like maybe lead us through a prayer and, um, just knowing that there is truth and that there is someone, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't know who that someone was and I didn't want to believe it. I wanted to reject it. I was the last person ever to think that I would become Christian and not Christian as a religion, but a Christian as a follower of Jesus is a completely different thing. And so um, if you want to accept him in your heart, 
and see what he can do for you in your life and to save you. There's a reason why his name is above all names and can cast away the evil ones. If you are in bondage right now, just please pray with me. Um, our Lord, Heavenly Father, God, you have created all things. If some of these things are hard to accept right now, help us wrestle with them. God, we pray this now. I know that I have done so many things that have been putting me in bondage. But I want freedom. God, I want to know who you are, Jesus. I want to know who you are. Please come to me in a way that will be my testimony. Come to me in a real way and indwell my heart, Lord. Please guide my steps. Teach me your ways. Thank you that you bring truth and actual water to such a dry and barren world. There's just death without you. God, help us see this. I pray, Lord, that you drop the veil from the eyes of the people viewing this. You drop the scales from their eyes, Lord, so that they can see your ultimate truth. I pray, God, that you're able to take anything away from blocking their ears to hearing your truth. Lord, I pray that you bring people to minister to them, even today, to share your word with them. God, please indwell in them, regenerate them. Show them that you are alive, Lord, because you are, and you have been, and you are now, and you will be forevermore. Love covers a multitude of sins, and you love us, Lord. Pray for this for every person that watches this. In Jesus' name, amen.